Shalom. So far, we have seen slides that detail the use of functions, as well as a basic example of a function. In this video, we expand on that first example to show another function, as well as a script that utilizes both functions to accomplish a goal. Here we have the major steps that we want a set of codes to accomplish. First, we will define a height and radius of a cylinder in feet. Then, we will convert those parameters into meters. Finally, we will compute the volume and surface area of the cylinder. Converting from feet to meters can be accomplished by the function already discussed. We will write a new one to compute volume and surface area. And we will use a script to do the initial declaring of parameters and the calling of the functions. Here is the length converter function already discussed in previous videos. Note that since we are converting from feet to meters, option one will be used each time. Here's the code for the new function that computes the volume and surface area of a cylinder when given the radius and height. Computing the volume is done with a single line of code. Computing the surface area is done with three lines. This is a good example of a function using intermediate values in the background that can be discarded once the desired result is accomplished. Area 1 and Area 2 will be lost to memory, but their creation was necessary to produce the surface area. This function doesn't deal with units at all. It will only produce sensible outputs if the input and output units are all the same. It is always important to keep in mind that the computer program is working with numbers, and it is the programmer's responsibility to ensure that units are implemented correctly. Here's the script that brings it all together. First, it assigns values to H and R in units of feet. Then, it calls the converter function twice, once for height and once for radius. Now, with variables in the proper units of meters, the cylinder function is called to produce the volume and the surface area. This next series of slides shows all the codes, with a few comments clipped to save space, as well as the workspaces involved. We will walk through the steps of this set of codes to see how the variables are interacting. After clicking Run on the script and processing through this line with the arrow, H and R are defined in the base workspace. Neither of the function's local workspaces exist because the functions have not yet been called. Now, at the point of the first function call, the main script is paused on its line until it receives the result from the function. Inside the function, the variables length old and opt have values copied into them. Length new will not exist until we reach a statement that creates it. After processing the if branch, length new is computed to be 1.52. We are now on the verge of leaving the function and returning back to the main script. When we do return, the function's workspace disappears and the base workspace has the variable hm appear with 1.52 copied into it. In short, we got what we needed from the function. This process is repeated as we now pass in the r value into the converter function. This is a brand new running of the function, so any values that were used before are not remembered. The next length new is computed to be 0.61, and we are just about to jump from the function back into the script. When we do, the function's workspace disappears, and rm is now created in the base workspace. Notice the flexibility of the function. Within the function, it uses general variable names like length new. But when called for a specific situation, the results can have a more specific meaning, such as radius in meters. Moving down in the script, we now call the cylinder function. In its workspace, variables radius and height are created from copying rm and hm. By the end of this run through the function, several more variables are computed, but it is only volume and surface area that are listed as output arguments. All the other information will be lost. Finally, we leave this function. Those values for volume and surface area are copied into the base workspace, and the operation is complete. 
I imagine it will be useful for you to watch through this video a couple more times to see the variable values bounce back and forth. When doing so, note the difference in names between the base workspace and the local workspace. Remember that when we call a function, we copy over values. We do not transfer variables. Admittedly, this is a simple example and one that could be accomplished relatively simply within a single script, but this outlines the basic structure for utilizing functions. The same principles apply when writing more complicated code, and the bigger the problem you have, the more advantageous it is to break it down into subtasks. Functions are a highly effective method for accomplishing subtasks.